What about the phone? How is it that the police had it in their possession, but they never figured out who he was for several days, that his body was not claimed, Trayvon's body, for several days? I mean, I think it just it shows that the Sanford Police Department, um, I mean, there was either corruption or just uh, wo woeful ignorance on their behalf. They were calling the family after losing their child, harassing the parents over his phone, wanting to get, you know, get to his phone, get in his phone, and they had the phone in their possession the entire time. So, you know, I, th there are a lot of questions that I can't answer because they don't make sense. On 2 27, 2012, at approximately 9.20 hours, after learning of a missing persons complaint in progress at the retreat view at Twin Lakes, I responded along with CSO Ed Manning and SPD officer B. McIntosh. On arrival, I met with Tracy Martin, who stated his 17-year-old son, Trayvon Martin, had not returned from going to the store sometime on that evening of 2 26. Mr. Martin informed me his son was not from this area and that his son is visiting from Miami Gardens, and that his son did not have a State of Florida identification card or driver's license. While conversing with Mr. Martin, I noted several physical characteristics he had in common with the descendant, thereby establishing a reasonable factual basis to believe that the descendant was the son of Mr. Martin. Upon presenting Mr. Martin with a photograph of the facial image of the descendant taken at the scene, positive identification was made in conjunction with next of kin notification. I explained the circumstances surrounding the passing of his son and summoned for a victim's advocate to assist. Victim's advocate Deborah Wagner responded and assisted Mr. Martin and his family. On 2 27 2012 at 10 hours, Trayvon Martin underwent a forensic autopsy. I noticed a black cell phone near the area of Martin. I then contacted Agent Shore from CCIB to my location and asked him to bring the Celebrate device, a device that is used to download cell phone information. Upon Agent Shore's arrival, he told me that he could not download any information because the cell phone battery was either very low or that was not operable because the cell phone had gotten wet because of the current weather condition. On February 28th, I spoke with S.A. Carter, who told me we did not need a search warrant. I had C.S.T. Smith take the cell phone to the Seminole County Sheriff's Office to see if he can download the cell phone. On March 1, 2012, I was contacted by the supervisor from the Seminole County Sheriff's Office that they could do nothing with the cell phone other than download what was on the memory chip because they did not have the password. On March 2, I contacted via email and asked Sergeant Silsa to recover the cell phone back from the Seminole County Sheriff's Office. On March 1st, I was contacted by a supervisor of the Seminole County Sheriff's Office that unless they had the swipe code, they could not access the victim's cell phone. On March 2nd, Investigator Singleton contacted a representative for T-Mobile who told her that the Sanford Police Department obtained the cell phone number and the PIN number to the account. They would be able to bypass the swipe code on the cell phone. On March 5th, I contacted Mr. Martin, victim's father via cell phone and asked if he could obtain the PIN number from the victim's cell phone. Mr. Martin stated he would contact his lawyer before releasing the information. 